everyone, and welcome today's, to today's live stream. I'm Cassandra, today's host from IFMA. While we wait for everyone to join us in the live stream, please drop us a line, be sure to tell us where you're from, and say hello. Before we get started, let's take a moment to go over today's format for this webinar. Our panelists have prepared a discussion around real estate assets and sustainability. We'll be, we will be taking questions throughout today's presentation, so be sure to leave them in the chat box and we'll get to them as time allows. We need a couple of things from you today during today's session. Please like the video that you're watching so others can find this great content. And again, be sure to drop, us, drop your questions in the chat box as well as tell us where you're tuning in from. With that, I'll turn it over to Kale Jamisi with IBM to kick off today's discussion. Thanks a lot, Cassandra. Uh, thanks for inviting us to, uh, to come present. And um, let's, uh, let's start the discussion. Um, so today's title is Real Estate Assets and Sustainability, Our Leading Enterprises uh, are Finding the Right Mix. And uh, my name is Cal Jamesi. I'm a product manager for IBM's Tririga offering, which is our uh, integrated workplace management uh, solution. Uh, with me today, uh, you'll hear later on, is uh, Sal Rosado, who's from our IBM Global Real Estate team. So let's let's just jump in, and uh, you know we've we we're, we're a year plus out from uh, from a lot of the return to work pandemic activity, and we see that corporate real estate is undergoing a massive shakeup. Um, we see that. Uh, Enterprises really have to look at the costs that they're incurring, and uh, the time for some real estate action is now as uh, companies are looking at rebalancing their portfolios and uh, uh, looking at, uh, look at how they have to change their, their, their workforce and, their, and their, their, por their portfolios. Most enterprises uh, had about 30 to 50 percent more real estate than it needed. That was before. That was in studies before the pandemic came out. Today, in-office occupancy stays has stayed stuck below 50% as we uh, track this on a weekly basis. So uh, we have lots of empty office space and, and companies are now have settled into the new work environment and are figuring out what to do with that space and how they, what their real estate needs are going to be in the future. Um, leading edge enterprises, they're transforming their real estate operations from an afterthought and they're becoming a figuring out how to make them a contributor to growth and profits. So that has a top line component, bottom line component, and a regulatory component. Uh, starting on the top line, we'll talk a bit later about workforce productivity and the opportunities there. Um, the, the availability of re revenue generating facilities such as retail outlets, restaurants, bank branches, arenas, all of those uh, are generating revenue as they, they fill up with customers again. Um, and the uptime of re revenue generating capital assets such as cell towers, billboards, all of these have to be managed as part of a big portfolio. On the bottom line, uh, real estate portfolio optimization and realignment is in full force. Uh, reduction in space usage, efficiency of maintenance and warranty repairs, and the cross-pollination of data across the real estate lifecycle uh, to further optimize operations. In between that, real estate executives have to think about the regulatory environment. Uh, there have been lease accounting mandates out there for a few years now, ACS, IFRS, uh, in the government space, GASB is now uh, becoming uh, a requirement this year. Um, systems of record for real estate systems are often a system of record for, for audits on safety, ISO, SOC, various environmental audits, and the big thing coming down the pike is more rigorous ESG reporting, and we'll talk about that in short order. So these enterprise real estate challenges are becoming increasingly complex. Real estate remains, in most cases, the second highest organizational cost after, uh, after its people, and if it, as an underutilized asset, that becomes even more of an acute issue. Enterprises are continue to be hampered, as we see, by siloed systems. Uh, this increases cost and the ability to respond in a timely manner to critical events. There's, as with any every part of large enterprises and in everything that they do, there's data proliferation and the isolation of data between real estate functions really limit cost savings, all while 
figuring out how to invest in the workplace experience to uh, make the workplace attractive, not only to bring people back into it to collaborate, but also to attract uh, new talent in the fight for talent as uh, we see uh, record numbers of job openings and, and low unemployment levels. All of these challenges obviously were compounded by the pandemic, the pressure to reduce costs, the uh, need to bring people back safely and making sure that workplace services are available when and where they're needed. Um, there are some things that are, we see that are holding back some of the digital transformation that has been going on for a number of years. And this is from one of our uh, large scale CIO studies that we've done through our Institute for Business Value. And we asked about some of the digital transformation challenges that enterprises are seeing. Organizational complexity is at the top of the list, uh, regulatory compliance and, and greater regulatory compliance, and then legacy systems and architecture uh, constraints also dominate. So as we have very complex operations, the desire to automate business processes and be able to configure them to adapt to your process, software to adapt to your processes is critical. Um, we see uh, and we take very seriously the, the higher and higher level and rigor to uh, ESG uh, reporting that's going to be required. And Sal will talk about what we're doing at IBM in short order on that. Um, we also see that there's a lot of fragmentation of systems. So a lot of enterprises that we go into have 10 or more systems. Some have 20, 30, even 40 or more systems uh, that manage the whole real estate life cycle and all the real estate activities that organizations are doing. We think that's highly inefficient, of course. Uh, the idea of single service, single purpose, best of breed solutions, we think uh, limits the ab ability to connect data across operations and uh, reduces responsiveness. Traditionally, real estate, corporate real estate teams have focused on five core capabilities. Um, and they would be the management of the whole real estate portfolio itself, what, what facilities should uh, they acquire, dispose of, lease, own, and so forth. Managing sustainability, the energy usage, the waste, the water uh, that the, the, the facility uses. Maintenance. And that can be not just uh, break fix types of maintenance, but also various types of service orders that may need to be uh, managed and, and, and monitored through, through an enterprise. Managing projects, large scale projects that could be new construction, renovation, uh, sustainability programs or other types of facility condition assessment uh, programs to, that, that are part of a, a large scale project, need large scale project management. And then of course, space. Space has a couple of components. One is the tools that are needed behind the scenes by space planners to, uh, to optimize and monitor the occupancy and, and, uh, and, and set up floor plans and, and the space that the enterprise needs for its various purposes. And the other half of that is the uh, user tools and the workplace experience tools that you put into the hands of the everyday users that don't care about all this back of the behind the scenes planning. They just want everything to be uh, available to them conveniently uh, as they need it. So in our minds, um, we want to assemble this together in something that we're, we're starting to call strategic real estate asset management. And in, from IBM, this offers a uh, best in class applications to manage complex business operations it's made up of three main components. One is our real estate management solution called Tririga Application Suite to manage the workplace, the cost optimization, all the activities that I just showed on the previous slide. Uh, second, a Maximo Application Suite, which is for monitoring and management and maintenance of critical assets. These are uh, high, high availability and, and uh, uh, import critical assets that are often monitored with sensors. <clears throat> and, and, and other types of uh, software to, to make sure that they uh, attain all the uptime that's needed. And then finally, measurement and reporting of sustainability through an acquisition we recently made uh, called Invisi. So these three uh, tools together offer really a best-in-class solution for the entire enterprise's need. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So STREAM, as we call it, extends the sustainability, maintenance, and asset management to optimize real estate life cycles. Rather than the, the, the five pillars, uh, pillars of traditional corporate real estate that I outlined a couple of slides ago, we like to start, we've started to think about this in this life cycle that, uh, that goes from onboarding uh, facilities, from acquisition and building them out, to the use and management of, the, of these facilities and space, uh, all the way through disposal. And when we start to think about all of the different use cases and activities that enterprises are already doing and often are is fragmented across multiple systems, <clears throat> when we put these three solutions together, you can see it's, uh, it's, it's quite a set of capabilities that, um, that, are, that are delivered through this life cycle. Eliminating the organizational process and data silos reduces operational costs and improves strategic decisions. 75% of large enterprises have to draw from 20 or more uh, different data sources in order to inform the business intelligence reporting and analytics that they require um, across their enterprise. This is becomes even more of an issue when you have uh, difficult uh, uh, business continuity type issues and other um, other, other things that pop up that require immediate response and can't take the time to put all these data sources together. 50% um, of enterprises struggle with data integration that's required to do all this. And the impact, Forrester did a great study on this recently, and the impact is about a 30% productivity loss from all of this uh, assembly of information and the inability to respond in a timely manner to information that enterprises need. So why why now? Why why does it now make sense for for this type of a, a solution and to have a, a a solutions across the enterprise for for real estate operations? Well, we've talked about the enterprise challenges a few slides back, the regulatory constraints, legacy infrastructure, and operational complexity I, I, I addressed earlier in the presentation. Let's talk about a few other things. One is this ongoing realignment of real estate portfolios and work models. We've brought people back more than a year ago now after an initial surge and a couple of surge cycles of in-office occupancy. By and large, in-office occupancy stays, is staying stuck below 50%. So there's a lot of excess space and CFOs are starting to really think hard about uh, what they're going to do with that and how they can potentially downsize their portfolio or realign it in some way. Secondly, sustainability. You'll hear a lot more about that as, as I transition to sale in a few minutes. Um, we see uh, a lot of uh, upcoming requirements and rigorous requirements for uh, sustainability reporting and also corporate social responsibility type goals that enterprises um, have created for themselves to be able to improve and protect the image of their brand. Um, and we'll talk about what IBM is doing in that regard. A couple of other things, there's been an increased rate of M&A activity, spinoffs, divestitures, about 60% increase last the year before last in M&A activity. It was one of the biggest years on record. Every time that there's large M&A activity, uh, there's uh, facilities that are and, and assets are also a part of that transaction. It's not just people and products. Uh, so corporate... Uh, Real estate groups have to be responsive to uh, to accommodate that and to uh, to to bring those uh, new new capabilities in efficiently. And then finally, business continuity events. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about the pandemic. Everybody's heard enough about that. But there's business continuity events of every sort that are causing facilities to go down and to for a whole host of activities to have to happen very rapidly, from accounting to people accounting for people, locating people, uh, leasing new facilities, uh, mo moving people to, to new places, uh, capital projects to bring facilities that have been brought down by any myriad of events from uh, weather events, hurricanes, flooding, fires, uh, geopolitical events, uh, large multinationals have spent the last year uh, moving all their, their facilities and shutting them down in Russia, for example as an example in response to geopolitical events. So business continuity 
activities have been on the rise and on the increase and and every organization has to be ready for those and and not just to be able to do it but do it in a responsive way to get your facilities back online so finally um before i hand it over to sal i'll introduce a, a little bit of a uh, a maturity model that uh, we've put together for uh corporate performance um starts down at the, the lowest end where where uh, we still see a lot of uh, uh, of uh, enterprises that are um, decentralized. Uh, they using point solutions for a variety of things. If you think of the the life cycle that I presented with all the use cases uh, a couple of slides ago, uh, those can all might be independent buys of, of software to perform different capabilities in that. Uh, the next stage of that is integrated solutions that start to bring those things together, centralized operations, uh, performance management, where organizations are starting to uh, actively track and manage to uh, KPIs that they're monitoring on a regular basis, strategic management, where uh, the real estate operation has become a, a key part of the corporate decision-making and, and begins to enter the, uh, the, the C-suite and then a value creation strategy ultimately. So think about where you might be on this continuum and, uh, and uh, you know, the, the, the idea obviously is to, is to continue to advance and have a transformation plan to, to move up a model like this. So with that, let me hand it over to Sal Rosato uh, from our IBM Global Real Estate team. Thanks, Cal. As Cal, said mentioned my name is Sal Rosado and I lead the IBM Global Real Estate Workplace Technology Transformation Team and I uh, appreciate this this time for me to share some of the work that we've been doing. So at IBM our purpose is to be the catalyst that makes the world work better and we in Global Real Estate look to embody this purpose as we partnered with IBM software and consulting teams to provide early adopter feedback to help optimize IBM's real estate related applications and services. IBM has a longstanding commitment to the environment. We have stated environmental protection policy for more than 50 years and our programs are rooted in pollution prevention and environmental protection. Even from the days when we were a major manufacturer and in those times, it wasn't common for manufacturers to publicize their environmental stance or impact. We did. We've been transparent, transparently publicizing our environmental results for more than 30 years. In fact, we're about to publish our 32nd annual environmental report. The G in ES, the G in ESG uh, is governance. And the governance of our environmental program is managed through our Global Environmental Management System, or EMS. IBM's EMS has been ISO 14001 certified since 1997. And our energy management system is also certified under 50001. We use specific goals to drive environmental outcomes. And we're presently on our fifth generation climate goal. And we have specific targets covering all aspects of our environmental impact. So let's look at some of them. We have 21 corporate environmental goals, as you see here. And we in global real estate are responsible for 11, those with circles around them. Under energy and climate, our overall goal is to be net zero by 2030. And we have several milepost goals supporting our progress between now and then. Net zero means different things to different people. However, we challenge ourselves by not using biological-based offsets. We don't believe biological-based offsets such as planting trees or preserving forests should play a role in our carbon accounting. They're important, but they shouldn't play a role in our carbon account accounting. We're transparent that we're likely to have 350,000 tons of residual greenhouse gas emissions that we'll manage with other technology in 2030. We have renewable energy goals of 75% by 2025 and 90% by 2030, as well as energy efficiency goals to help us ensure we achieve our ultimate target of net zero by 2030. So some of those mileposts I talked about. 
Turning to conservation and biodiversity, we commit to reducing our water withdrawals year to year, as well as planting 50 pollinator gardens by the end of this year. We're also ensuring that all of our new major construction and renovation projects are LEED and well certified. I mentioned our environmental management system on the previous slide. We have a publicly stated goal to maintain ISO certification of these management systems. And finally, under pollution prevention and waste management, we've committed to diverting 90% of our non-hazardous waste from landfills, as well as eliminating single use plastics from our cafeteria operations. So let's take a quick look at our portfolio by the numbers. So we have 700 locations and our lease team manages 1300 leases. We're about 70% uh, leased. Our buildings cover 50 million square feet of space and we're in 139 countries. We have 138,000 assets in those buildings, things like pumps and chillers that we maintain. And when you look at the breakdown of our space, 45% of our space is office space. And this may be surprising, but 25% of our space is still dedicated to manufacturing, things like pilot chip lines or, or mainframe manufacturing. 4% of our space is research labs, 9% data centers, and then 17% utility space, central utility plants, water treatment facilities, things like that. We serve 282,000 IBMers, plus another 88,000 contractors. And, and we run our real estate with 350 global real estate employees, supplemented by another 4,000 real estate contractors, teams like JLL, Appleona, Cushman and Wakefield, CBRE. And our budget to do this is around $2 billion a year. And I talked about the 138,000 assets. Well, some of those assets are very critical to our operations, such as computer room cooling units, generators, control systems, chillers, pumps, and fans that have critical uptime requirements to support our data centers, manufacturing lines, and treatment facilities. When, when we think about challenges, in addition to the, the challenges of maintaining critical uptime, we, we've also faced increasing challenges over the past several years, including the adjustment of our real estate portfolio size and configuration to align with hybrid work models. This is incredibly important as, as Cal pointed out, real estate is typically the second highest cost for, for most corporations. And this was further complicated by the 23 acquisitions that were executed in the last five years, as well as the spinoff of Kindrel. With the Kindrel spinoff, we shed 222 sites and 20 million square feet of space in the creation of this $18 billion standalone business. So it was just an incredibly monumental work effort by so many. While doing this, we also needed to ensure that we aligned our environmental reporting with the proposed and new regulations. And of course, throw the pandemic response on top of all of that with the need to keep our manufacturing lines and research facilities in continuous operation. So the rate, pace and complexity of challenges we faced forced us to rethink our historic software stack. And here's a look at that stack. Our application stack had many vestiges of our past decentralized operation. It still contained localized point solutions that were not aligned with our global strategy. Overall, we had too many applications. Our applications were also highly customized, which made them difficult to maintain and upgrade. In short, our application stack was complex, siloed, and customized, which slowed progress and limited our ability to react quickly. So we realized transformation was required for us to achieve our goals. We look to significantly simplify our application stack 
to eliminate data and workflow silos, to reduce the manual handoff of work between users and simplify IT man management. Our North Star applications and service diagram is on the right. In the top blue box, you can see we're working with IBM Consulting to implement our transformation changes. We're collapsing the legacy stack on the left predominantly down into Tririga for real estate lifecycle management, Maximo for asset management, and Invisi for sustainability. Eliminating software customizations allows us to expedite upgrades and be early adopters of new features and capabilities, such as the inclusion of Internet of Things sensors to improve occupant experience and asset management. So let's take a look at how we're doing it. So we kicked off our transformation by creating a partnership with our chief information office. This is the group in IBM who provides us with a long-term care and feeding for our applications. The chief uh, data office who curates our enterprise data standards and hosts the cognitive enterprise data platform, which is a enterprise-wide data fab fabric, allowing us to share insights between business units. The sustainability software team who own the Tririga, Maximo, and Invisi applications. And in fact, that software team has dedicated 50% of one of their chief technical officers' time to this initiative. He's embedded with us in real estate. And IBM Consulting for Process Reengineering and Software Configuration. So that's the partnership. And our transformation, I like to think of as a machine with three cogs. The first cog is process and applications. And for that, we used BlueWorks Live, a software uh, uh, mapping tool, to map our existing process and then re-engineer it to align with Tririga, Maximo, and Invisi applications as they come out of the box, eliminating customizations. Then the second cog, we formalized our data governance program with defined ownership roles and a comprehensive data dictionary to ensure data quality and transparency. Then for insights, we established a program, again, creating report ownership roles and conducting design thinking workshops to assess the reporting and dashboarding requirements that allow us to move from mostly manual Excel based reporting that was siloed on individuals' machines to running our business through automated reporting and dashboarding tools like Cognos Analytics. So Tririga is the foundation for our uh, real estate lifecycle management. Our lease management, space management, and room reservations are executed through Tririga today. And in fact, as we were exiting the uh, pandemic, we used Tririga to ensure social distancing, to uh, enforce uh, desk reservations and cleaning policies. Now we're mi migrating lease transaction work into Tririga and expect to have that completed this month. We're also migrating all capital planning and project related work into Tririga. So our large and small projects as well will be executed through the workflows in Tririga. Additionally, we're deploying Tririga Building Insights, which will allow us to move from our current customized methods of assessing building utilization, which is so key to the decisions that we make, to this off-the-shelf application that ingests Wi-Fi and IoT data to produce anonymized occupancy reports. We're finding that the migration of these workloads into Tririga has reduced manual handoffs and replication and data entry into multiple systems. And this is allowing us to continue to optimize the way we work as a real estate organization. From a sustainability perspective, here in global real estate, our primary use of Invisi is to collect, manage, and verify our energy water bills, our energy and water bills. And the IBM corporate environmental affairs team uses Invisi to perform IBM's greenhouse gas accounting for scope one, two, and three emissions. We manage all of our energy and water conservation projects, as well as using the survey module to manage our energy conservation best practices. 
There are several other Invisi modules that you can see here that Global Real Estate is still exploring. Invisi is really a full scope ESG management tool, including tracking social metrics with integrations to HR platforms like Workday. Interestingly, my colleagues on the GRE sustainability team surveyed the marketplace a couple of years ago for a tool that met their recording and reporting requirements. They looked at more than 20 applications and ultimately chose Invisi. The GRE team then shared their findings with IBM Sustainability Software Group, who were also impressed and subsequently acquired Invisi, and now it's part of the IBM portfolio. And then for asset management, Maximo provides the foundation for our asset management program. We're currently upgrading to the latest version of Maximo, which includes Monitor. The Monitor module gives us the ability to integrate equipment data from IoT and building management instrumentation, as well as from autonomous data collection platforms such as drones and robots. In fact, we're currently running a pilot at our Poughkeepsie New York site in conjunction with IBM Research and Consulting, and we're using the Boston Dynamic Spot robot with Ma Maximo visual inspection capabilities to read gauges, perform inspections, and provide thermal scans of critical equipment. And with this work, we're, we're demonstrating the ability to address staffing shortages, as we all saw through the pandemic, and have work done in hazardous er areas, improving safety, while also improving data collection quality and allowing direct transmission of that field data into Maximo for analysis. Historically, when these uh, routes were walked by people, the, the data was recorded on paper and ultimately disposed of, not, not really well used. So you can see the massive improvement that we're realizing here. Then Maximo Health will allow us to understand the condition of our critical assets while PREDICT will provide early warning of impending failures. The Maximo application suite provides us the necessary capabilities to move from time-based maintenance to condition-based maintenance, and then predictive maintenance as we continue to mature our asset management program. Now, it's kind of putting it all together. So, we're utilizing the native connectors between Tririga, Maximo, and Invisi to optimize our overall performance. For instance, the out-of-the-box integration allows us to send location hierarchy data from Tririga to Maximo so that all of our assets are indexed to that single source of truth for locations. This creates, this, this fixes one of our sins of the past. As we previously had unique location hierarchy in Maximo, and that generated difficulties when we were creating reports. Additionally, occupants of our building use Tririga workplace services to reserve rooms. And now with the Trimax connector, we're enabling service requests made in that same application to be sent directly into Maximo. There our facility management provider complete the work orders and the status is sent back to the requester in Tririga. So there's, there's full transparency on the status of their work. We also intend to send asset condition information from Maximo to Tririga, and this will inform our capital planning work that we'll do there and share refrigerant inventory between uh, Maximo and Invisi to support our sustainability goals. So we learned a, a few lessons along the way. Trans transformation is definitely a, a team sport and those teams need permission uh, right from the top to change how business gets done. So they need, they, it's, it's important that leadership is all in on the transformation work. You should include broad participation. And for us, that meant including not only our central strategic teams, but also the teams from each geography as well as our facilities management providers. We wanted to gather diverse opinions and experience and it's, it was quite fruitful. Then configure, don't customize your software. Configuration is any change to software that won't come over with an upgrade. 
So in other words, if you have to re-engineer and re a regression test that change every time you do an upgrade, it's gonna slow you down. So removing that customization allows for upgrade faster cycles so you can leverage the latest software capabilities. From a sustainability perspective, it's about being transparent about your goals and status. Ensuring accurate data is necessary for you to be credible. While we encourage automated data verification, uh, automation in data collection, verification still needs to happen. For us, that's both internal and external verifications by third parties. And then finally, governance. There are many moving parts and changes during transformation, so it's important to define clear roles and responsibilities. Each functional area should have an owner identified to ensure changes align with the business goals and objectives to ensure consistency. And finally, leverage single sources of truth ac across applications. Consider the example of location hierarchy being shared from Tririga to Maximo and Invisi, which allows for faster, more accurate reporting. And so the time to act is now. Real estate, assets, sustainability, these need to be aligned into a package to ensure that enterprises can respond to events that unfold continually and dynamically. We're excited as we continue on our own journey. We're always exploring new ideas and love to speak with others on how we can collaborate to grow our capabilities and yours. So thanks for your time today. Thanks, Cal and Sal. I wanted to thank all of you who tuned in today for your questions and engaging with us. I'd like to say a special thanks to Cal and Sal for lending us their expertise and insights into real estate assets and sustainability. If you have not already done so, please like the video you're watching now, as doing so will help IFMA reach more FMs like you. For more great content like you saw today or to catch our previous webinars, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, there's still time to join us at Facility Fusion April 11th through 13th in San Francisco, California. We hope to see you all there. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day.